So what I'm going to try and show you in this video here is exactly how we get that data, the numbers from the pendulum that was swinging back and forth, and how are we going to determine g, the Earth's gravity, from it. So here's that Arduino code which we are running here, and we'll talk about the code uh, in a later video, but we have a few things in there to help us get going with it. But in the case, these are the numbers that they was spit out as the pendulum oscillated back and forth here. And you can see the numbers changing there. There's a there's a start message right there, which I sort of have in the code here to tell me where the program started. It starts about 0.91, and see as I start swinging, it goes up to 1.4, 1.5, back down to 0.9, back up again to 1.5. It sort of swings and so on. So the data is really hard to deal with in this big tabular format like that. So let's just copy the whole thing out. And what I'm going to do then is I'm actually just going to paste the numbers here into text wrangler. So I paste them into a, just a text editor here. I'm using text wrangler, but you can use word pattern, text pattern, notepad, or whatever. But you just need to get yourself sort of a plain text copy of all the numbers, okay, into a file somewhere you can find it, like on your desktop or something. And I can see my start message sort of buried down to here. So this is all just a bunch of garbage that was in the serial buffer when I started. So I'll just sort of get rid of all that here just by deleting to clean up my file a bit. So I just have my numbers now. Remember, the time is the number before the column, and the voltage at that center point of the voltage divider is the second number. So I've got it all here. And the reason why I want to do that now is, is, is save that to your desktop, as I said, in some sort of text file format so you can have it. Then what you do is get a spreadsheet going, like Excel here. And when you have that so-called two-column comma-separated value file, I called mine pend.csv, Excel then is sort of happy to load it in like that. And you can see now in column A, I have my times, and in column B, I have that, those voltages now. So the first thing I'm going to do to get a handle on this data is I'm going to graph it. So I'm going to highlight both columns here, and I'll go ahead and insert an object. Here's the chart there, and see what I get. And that's not the way I wanted to do that. Just bear with me here. Um, let me do that a different way. Let's see if I can just insert... Um, charts and I want to make a scatter plot right here and here's my data right here okay from the two columns here's my data that I got and you can see it's sort of what I expect I can just grab this corner here and enlarge it now I guess I can't okay here we go just enlarge there we go I just want to enlarge a bit there okay bit clumsy sorry about that okay here we go so here's the data that I expect here. This is the pendulum oscillating back and forth. And see, so it oscillates away and then towards and then away and towards. All the nice features are in there. And you can see that the amplitude is sort of dying down, which we expect also. There's a lot of friction in this thing. But it turns out the damping doesn't affect the period at all. So all we'd like to do now is go ahead and see if we can extract the periods from the thing to see how long it took the pendulum to swing back and forth in a rather precise way here. So if I sort of click on the plot, and hold the mouse cursor over a peak like that. You see that 1121 there? That's the time at which that peak occurred. So the voltage was 1.53, that's sort of the position of the pendulum, at a time of 1121 milliseconds. So I'm going to write down the 1121. I'll go to the next place here. I see a 2688. Then I see a 4220. Then I see a 584799, pardon me. Then I see a 7344, 8877, and 10,408. So those are the milliseconds at which the sort of extreme and the pendulum, pendulum motion occurred. So to go ahead and calculate G now, what I'm going to do is I need a good average of those numbers. So I'm going to type them in here. My numbers are slightly different than the ones I just showed you here. I did it earlier to make sure it was going to work, and these are some slightly different numbers here. Works just fine, too. I just want to show you how I did it. You have to do a bit of data analysis here. So those, those numbers are about the same numbers where those peaks occurred here, and I need the difference between them because the difference between the peaks is indicative of the period. So I'll just do a quick formula here. I'll do A2 minus A1. So, you know, 1,567 milliseconds went by between this maximum and that maximum. Okay, but either case, I'll just copy all these values down here. And then there's all the peri periods here. It looks like it's coming into about 1,500 milliseconds or about 1 1.5 milliseconds. I'll go ahead and get a nice average of them here. And again, I'm just doing this all on the spreadsheet, but you can do this all by hand if you want. So there you go. We got a nice average time of our pendulum there of about 1.522 seconds. Okay, that's how, about how long it takes the pendulum to swing out and come back on average 
uh, for the data that we took there. Okay. So how do you get g from all this stuff? Well, in the previous video, we showed you the formula. And I'll go ahead and just sort of crunch out the formula here as I see it here. But what we're doing here, this is actually a copy of Mathematica here, but again, you can use a hand calculator or have students do it or whatever. The formula here that we're sort of after, I've already got to get in there, but I'll reproduce it for you here, is 8 times pi squared. Okay, and you can put in 3.14 squared if you want. Just don't forget to square it. And now the length of the pendulum that I got here was about 35.5 uh, inches. And I need that to be in centimeters or better meters in order to make this formula work out. So I'll do a 35.5 and I'll multiply that by 2.54 since that's the conversion to centimeters and then divide by 100 to get it into meters. So this whole thing in the parentheses there is my length of the pendulum rod in meters. So I'm choosing to have the computer do all the crunching for me here. You can do it by hand, but it just needs to be in meters. And I'm gonna divide that all by three and now the key parameter here is the t squared which is the 1.552 seconds. I need to square that. That was the period of the pendulum that I extracted from the peaks and that little spreadsheet column that I did. So now if I press return on this here, look at that result, 9.85. So the gravity near the surface of the Earth is known to be 9.8 meters per second squared. And from the 1.552 period of my pendulum and very careful work here to convert the length of the pendulum into meters, I'm getting a value of 9.8 or so. Just extremely accurate. What a wonderful experiment. I was able to determine the, gra the acceleration due to the Earth's gravity using a simple voltage divider, a potentiometer, and an Arduino acting as a voltage, voltage measuring device or a voltmeter. Wonderful.